So what we're doing here is we're looking at uh, my example of what we're striving toward by the end of the course at uh, vmcompass.com slash sdce. And again, if you look at it on your mobile device, it'll look the most accurate. Uh, you'll have some uh, graphics and some text and some buttons, and this is real. You can click on it. You can click on art. You should see a little fade animation. Uh, again, our Wi-Fi is really terrible in here, so I apologize for that, but try it on our computer. Um, you can go to computer screen. These are some fake uh, information on classes. Notice those animations. See how that screen, look at how, how that slides up. As you go to the different screens, it does that. You've got some widgets here that open and close. This is responsive, which means that if this were on a tablet that was more horizontal, it would grow to fit that size. <coughs> so that's responsive. Um, back on the home screen on that info button, if you click that or tap it, there's a pop-up screen that happens. over on the art screen. Uh, I can look at the catalog which opens an external link but it'll look better on a mobile device. We have art calendar which is a side panel that opens up. More impressively back on that info screen we've got uh, customize. If you click customize you get a pop-up with a prompt that says enter your name. All right, I'll put my name and the purpose of that is now the app is customized with your name. So your name is in the app. And then even more impressively, if you go over to Get Directions, on the web browser, it's asking me that the site would like to know your location. Most likely, if you also go to that screen on your mobile, it'll ask you the same thing. Would you like to share your location? If you click Allow, it should then open up a, a map. Mine is uh, over there somewhere in Little Italy. Uh, just because I'm on a desktop computer and those don't have the best GPS, <laughs> if you're on your on your mobile device, most likely it's a more accurate um, location. So this is a real map. You can drag it and drop it and zoom in and all of that. You can even do street view. Try that on your mobile device. You'll have a real street view right on mobile. And then you click Get Directions and it'll show you turn-by-turn -turn directions from your location to this to this college. So again, if we're doing it from here, it'll probably just tell you make a U-turn and go inside. <coughs> so the um, it's not going to talk to you and tell you turn left here and do this and that, but it does give you directions. It's real. It does uh, find your real location and give you directions. This one defaulted to a location near Little Italy just because, well, if you don't have internet connection, it at least wants to give you some starting point so we can set that all up. We can set the starting point, the ending point, all of that. And everything that we're looking here is a web page. It's all built with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And if you're looking at it on your mobile device, it's really close to an app, isn't it? It's not fully an app in that it's installed on the device and it doesn't have the features like taking a, a photo with the camera or tapping into the contacts of your device, but that'll be month two. Month one, we're going to be building something like that. So any questions so far on this example? So we'll be able to customize it with our own colors and fonts, icons and graphics. As I said, day one we're going to be focusing on if you have no experience in HTML. So if you've already got some, this might be a, a, a retread, this might uh, feel that you've done it, that you've done this before, um, and so bear with us. But we will quickly go on with more advanced topics on, on day two. And that also, I'm reminded, uh, in addition to no food and beverages in the, in the room, also if you haven't done so yet, please mute your devices. If you haven't put these on vibrate, if you haven't muted your laptop or tablet or whatever, please do so. But um, the way this will work is we're going to use 
a pretty lightweight and powerful code editor, which is free. It's already installed on our computers, and if you want to install it on your home computer, you're free to do so. What we're going to use is a software called Notepad++. You can just search for it, and eventually you'll get to notepad-plus-plus.org. These are already installed on our computers. You don't have to install it. It's done. On your own laptop or at home, you, I recommend this. But if you're familiar with and comfortable with Eclipse, fine. If you're comfortable with Visual Studio, fine. If you're comfortable with Sublime Text or Brackets or many of the or any of the many other um, code editors, fine. But I'm going to be talking. I'm going to be using Notepad++. And if you're on the Mac, what you want is Text Wrangler. Text Wrangler is the uh, code editor of choice that I recommend, but again, if, you, if you're comfortable with your own code editor, fine. But on Windows, I recommend Notepad++ for our purposes. <coughs> on Mac, I recommend um, Text Wrangler, and then on Linux, well, you know what you're doing. Or I can recommend VI. So the software is already, already here. Let's go ahead then and go to your start menu. Go to your start menu and load Notepad++. We'll talk about the workflow and then we'll actually write some code. Go ahead and load up Notepad++. If you get a, a pop-up about updates, just cancel that. But from the start menu you want to from the start menu you want to search Notepad++ and we load it up here. Here in Notepad++, then we'll go to the file menu new. So we have a brand new document, which is of course the best and worst thing possible because now you've got a brand new empty document and the sky's the limit, which could be a big endeavor. So uh, let's first save. Let's go to File, Save As. How many of you brought a USB drive today? If you didn't bring one, that's okay. Uh, the work that we're going to do today is not going to be so mission critical that you need to take it with you to keep working on it next time. But if you want to save your work, you want to save it to a USB, or if you didn't bring a USB, you can email it to yourself. If you need help on doing that, well, at the end of the day, I can show you how to do that. But I'm going to save this, save as, I'm going to save it to my USB, or the desktop if you didn't bring a USB today. I'm going to put it in a folder, just call it Android 1. And on the file name, let's just call this, um, today's date is June 9th. We'll call it June 9th, or whatever you'd like. And then save as type, you need to make sure you save that as HTML. So change that to HTML. So we're saving our blank document with whatever file name, today's date, but make sure it's saving as hypertext markup language, HTML. Now, the technical definition of a programming language actually doesn't quite jibe with what HTML is. HTML is technically not a programming language. It is a markup language. That's why it's in the name, HTML, hypertext markup language. So HTML evolved from other languages, but basically it was invented in around 1989 by Tim Berners-Lee in Europe. So at about 1989, the HTML standard was published. And of course, with no amount of hyperbole, changed the world. You think, well, that's hyperbolic. But if you think about it, we use the internet and the web probably every day, lots and lots of times a day. We do our banking 
on the internet. We chat with friends and family. We buy movie tickets. Uh, we, we do a lot of things online. And the, all of that, a lot of that comes from the, the seed of HTML. So if you, if you never really stop to think about it, the HTML pro programming markup language changed the world. So we're going to be writing HTML, and we're going to be writing the latest version of it, HTML5. Uh, the language has evolved with different versions, just like Windows or Mac OS has changed every once in a while. And the current version that we're going to use is HTML5. So here in our document, we're going to create a brand new HTML5 compliant <coughs> document. If you've never done any of this programming, this is the most basic stuff we can talk about. Obviously, if you've had experience in HTML, you already know this, but again, you might learn a thing or two new. So what we're going to be doing is basically writing HTML <coughs> tags, whereas we mark our content, HTML. So we, uh, we're going to write the document type tag, which is the angle bracket, or the less than symbol, which is shift, comma, and then the greater than symbol, or the, uh, the right angle bracket, which is shift period. We're going to be typing this over and over and over. Inside of this, though, inside of the tag here, we're going to be then writing the exclamation point, shift 1, and then the word doc type. D-O-C-T-Y-P-E. Doc type space HTML. Basically, what we're saying this is our document type definition. We're saying that this document is of type HTML, specifically HTML5. Well, there's no 5 there. Don't write a 5. In the old days, we would write something like doc type, um, you know, doc type. XHTML 1.1 slash slash en dash us slash slash blah 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 blah. We would write a huge doc type definition to say this is HTML version 1 or 2 or XHTML version 1 or whatever. Now, with the adoption of newer standards, we simply write doc type HTML. And that means HTML5, the latest language. So just by this one line here, we're already writing the latest, most modern HTML. Um, some of you that might have experience to say, well, why aren't you writing it in capital? Uh, don't worry about that yet. So, next line. Press enter. Uh, the next line is we're going to write the HTML tag. I'm going to start to use shorthand very quickly because I'm not going to be saying every time angle bracket, HTML, angle bracket. I'm going to say we're going to write the HTML tag. We're going to get used to that any tag that we create is going to have the opening angle bracket and the closing angle bracket. This is the HTML tag. Press enter a couple of times. And we'll write the HTML tag again. But this time, we'll write a slash right before the H. And notice in Notepad++, it highlights. If I click on line 3, and if I click on HTML, it highlighted. This is telling you, this is a pair. It found the pair. Most of the time, we're going to be writing pairs of tags, except the few cases that we don't, like doc type. But we're going to be writing pairs of tags. Line 2 tells me I'm going to start my HTML document, and line 4 tells me I end the HTML document, and that's because there's that slash there. Everything between those two tags then will be the HTML document, which will be the whole app. The whole app will exist between those two lines. Um, go back to line 3, and we'll press tab to jump, to jump over a bit tab, and then we'll write the head tag, and that has a pair. So again, I'm going to be using shorthand. Head tag, open and close. What I mean by that is, of course, I write the head, angle bracket, head, angle bracket, and then angle bracket slash, notice where the slash is, head, 
angle bracket. After the head tags, enter. Notice Notepad was smart enough to keep us indented. The body tag. And as you get practice with this, it'll go faster. Body slash body. So 98% of the time, we have pairs of tags. Of course, I'll mention the tags that don't have a pair, like doc type, like image, um, meta, other ones. But most of the time, you can be safe to know that you'll have pairs of tags. I'll explain, of course, what head and body mean in just a moment, but we're still building the skeleton of our very basic HTML file. So now we'll go back to the head section and tab right there. These tabs are actually optional because technically we could write our HTML document as one long line that goes off the edge. One long line that goes and goes and goes and goes. The, the web browser won't care. It will be able to render it no problem. But for us, that's going to be hard to read. One long line that goes on forever. So you can, you, I recommend be liberal with your, with your enters to, to divide up the sections and be liberal with tabbing so that things are indented and they're more readable. That's just for us to be able to read it. The computer won't care. The, 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 the Android device won't care if you've got spaces. But for us, for our readability, um, I think it's useful. And also, what I think is useful is whenever we're writing pairs of tags, which is most of the time, I recommend that we write the complete pair first and then write the details. By what, what I mean by that is, now we're going to write one more tag here, the title tag. Title, close title. Open title, close title. That's what we're going to do. We're going to, because there's details in between. But I don't want to get off track with writing a bunch of details and I forget to close my tag. Because everything that we're doing here is we're marking our document. We're saying between HTML and slash HTML is marked as a web page. Between head and slash head, it's marked as the head of our document, which I'll explain what that is later. And then between body and slash body, we've marked it's the body of the document. Later on, we'll mark this is an image. We'll mark this is a heading. We'll mark this is a link. That's the ML in HTML. It's a markup language, so technically it's not a programming language. We're marking content to be displayed a certain way. So that's why I'm saying if we're going to have pairs of tags, I recommend, and the way I program is I close my tags so that I don't forget to close a tag because if I have a thousand lines of code and I forgot to close that pair, my app will probably not work. So I'm in the habit of closing my tags. And I know that other code editors automatically t close tags for you, but sometimes it's good to do it the hard way to know the, the rules and such. And then as you get more experience, you can take your shortcuts. But here, we've got the title tag. And tab it one more time, and we'll say, we'll write June 9th, 2015. And notice I wrote it in normal, human readable, capital letters, and spaces. <coughs> Whereas in contrast, everything else is lowercase. That's the HTML5 standard as well. Lowercase. This is my document so far, 11 lines. written in HTML5. I want to back up and actually add one more tag that defines our character set, which means what are the possible languages that I could use in my project? Can I use English? Can I use Spanish? Can I use Russian? Can I use Hebrew? So we're going to uh, define our character set, and I will add that before title. So go back and add an enter before title. And this one is going to be a tag that does not have a pair. And it's the meta tag. No pair for the meta tag. 
what it does have are our, um, our attributes, uh, properties, which means that inside of the tag, notice where my cursor is, right after the word, what after the letter A, but before the angle bracket, I'm going to add a space right there. I'm still inside the tag, and we will write C H A R S E T car set or char set car set equals quote end quote again that's a pair and my habit is I write my pairs because if I started to write that and I wrote all the stuff that I need to write here and I forgot to close that pair my whole project is broken it won't work because of one character did you see that everything turned purple but when I close that quote it goes back to blue that's normal So that's why I said quote, and then right away, end quote. And your quote is shift uh, apostrophe, which is right next to the enter. And what we'll write here is UTF-8. So here we're tapping into thousands upon thousands of possible characters that we could use in our project. For example, the letters of the English alphabet, the letters of the Spanish alphabet, you know, the accented E, the Enya, tapping into Cyrillic alphabet, uh, etc., etc. So here we're saying we can use a variety of languages in our project. Let's jump down to the body, line 10. Notice we've got line numbers. So now we can intelligently say, let's go to line 12 and make this change. <clears throat> Instead of saying, go to that place where you've got the body tag. Well, line 10. Go to line 10 and tab that. And on this, for the moment, we'll write, hello world. The classic first bit of code that everyone writes since the 50s or 70s or something, when people have been writing code. In our case, markup language, but code. Hello world. So if you've never written any HTML before, pat yourself on the back, you are an HTML developer now. <laughs> 12 lines of code, and that's a web page. That's a web project. Now, it's still a bunch of code, and not must, most of us don't really can't process that. What does it actually look like in order for that to be processed or rendered? That's what our web browser is for. Our web browser takes this code and renders it as a real web page. So our workflow is we're going to write code, we're going to save our work, and then we're going to view it in the web browser. So notice at the top, this little What's this symbol here? It's a trick question because it's this it's the save icon, but it's a floppy disk, but who has seen a floppy disk in the last five years, ten years? Well, I've got some in my closet too, but it's the save symbol. So I'm just saying our document has not been saved yet because it's red. That other one has been saved. So it's just, just a quick visual aid that we have not saved yet. So you can, you can go to File, Save, you can press Control s to save, of course, you can click the little Save button over here. And I'm pointing this out, obviously, because we need to remember to save our work before seeing it in the web browser. If we don't save our work and run it in the web browser, we won't see the latest code. So let's save it. It's blue. And then here in Notepad, we have Run and a variety of web browsers. Choose whichever you want, but I'm going to go with Firefox because it's the first one at the top. There's also keyboard shortcuts, and I can remember Control Alt Shift X, and that loads Firefox. And with practice, yes, you can do it with one hand. It's like a like a Klingon salute almost, a Vulcan salute. So run it in Firefox. Hello world. And there's June 9th up on the tab. That's my code so far. Let's pause here. Raise your hand if this worked. 
Okay, great. Take that hand and give yourself a pat on the back. You are a web designer. If you need any help, anyone need, need a, a little help, call me over. Here's our project so far. You want to make sure it, it looks like this. So you will you will fix it and be So let's move on. It looks like we've all gotten it. This very simple 12 lines here is just enough for us to have a skeleton of a website. 
a web page. This is obviously a long way away from the example I showed earlier, but eventually that's what we're going to have. So if you think, well, I don't know any of this, and how am I ever going to get to the point where I've got this very cool web app? How am I ever going to learn, or how am I ever going to get with my knowledge to this, with shadows and <coughs> animations and pop-ups and all of that? We'll get to that eventually, but a lot of that comes from a framework called jQuery Mobile, where you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. I know, like myself and a lot of people, when we first learn something and we learn all of the details of it, we want to code it and write it ourselves every time from scratch. And that's fine and that's fun the first few times, but then you have to do it for real or for a client or, or a project or whatever. I'm not going to waste time writing it from the beginning every time. I'm going to start with a framework. I'm going to take my basic knowledge and add it to a starting point. And that, in a sense, is what jQuery Mobile is we'll be able to easily add a nav bar by writing one line of code instead of writing 20 lines of code for a nav bar. We'll be able to create all of these extra different pages all within our HTML document but by using the jQuery mobile specific code. So that's what we're going to end up with. And if you're one of the more advanced students, you are welcome to go to the example project here, view the source code, maybe look ahead a little bit. It's all there. So, our project is this far, so far. It's just a little bit of text and then a title. Well, notice um, I wrote here June, we wrote here June 9th in the title tag, and uh, if we didn't know what that was, we should see that it's obvious that it appears up on the tab bar, the tab of the web browser. So that's what title means. And that's inside of head. Well, I didn't see the word UTF-8 appear anywhere, and it's not going to. This is a meta tag. This is content that is above, that is meta, that is beyond the, visual, the visible aspect of the site. But it's defining an important characteristic of the site of the project um, for it to uh, fully work. The Hello World did show up here in the body, like I wrote. Body, this is what's actually visible within the main window the main viewport of the of the web browser but actually I didn't mark it I didn't really give it uh, any any specific HTML code to give it a meaning we're gonna be talking a lot about uh, writing code to give meaning to our content the content is hello world the content is June 9th the content is a graphic, the content is, you know, any text or that information, the meaning of it uh, comes from the right tags, the right code. So what I want to do is add more meaning to Hello World. I want to make it big and bold and important. So I'm going to write the H1 tag, the heading tag. Watch how I'm going to write it. H1, and then here, slash H1. And that looks a little bit different than what we've written before. Whereas, in one line, I started the heading 1, and then on the same line, I closed the heading 1. And that's perfectly valid. Either or. As I said, the web browser, the app, the device won't care if your code is on one long line. It may be a bit unreadable. And I'm just showing you in contrast. This is exactly the same as if I had pushed this over here, and put that like that. Those three lines taking up that amount of space is exactly the same as this one line, like that. Either or. So usually what I do is, if I'm going to write something that is just maybe one sentence or one small little piece of something, I keep it on one line just to have, you know, a little bit more compact code. So I would have myself actually kept title like that, but it worked either way, so it's not necessary to change that. If you want to, you can. I'm going to keep it here on this multi-line, and I'm going to keep this one as a single line. But if you want to put it in multi-line like that, that's fine. So, what did that do? We've got H1. That's a number one, not an L. And remember, open tag, close tag with a slash. There are 
some parts of HTML are loose and some parts are strict. I'll point out what's loose and what's strict, but what's very strict is make sure that slash is right there. That it's angle bracket slash tag angle bracket. If you put it anywhere else, it won't work. But anyway, we've written the heading one tag. Why did we not write the word heading one? Well, when this was being invented, it was decreed as h1, not heading one. Some of these are just, well, why is that? Well, that's the way it is. You just have to learn it. And some of it is very obvious, and some of it not so obvious. But anyway, we made heading one. We need to remember to save. And then you can either run Firefox again, or if you've got your web browser already open, you can just refresh it. But I like to run it every time just because it opens a new tab where I can see my old version and my new version. If you refresh it, it'll just show you the latest version. That might not matter to you, but when I do, when you do run Firefox or Chrome or whatever, it opens a new tab to show you the new version of your code. And look at the difference. With no markup of Hello World, that's what that looks like, and with markup heading one, big and bold and important looking. We've given it a new meaning, a heading number one. Let's go back to our code. Let's go to the next line. We'll write another heading tag, this time heading 2. And now that I know, I'm going to write heading 2, h2, slash h2. And in, the, in between those two tags, you write what you want. What other one sentence or something do you want to write below Hello World? and you write it between the tags. So Notepad++ is a, is a code editor. Um, it has color coding it has code highlighting and code collapsing and so forth and other features. What I mean by that is notice that if you click on the body tag, it highlights where body starts, where body ends. If you've got 500 lines of code and you're trying to find where does it start, what is it, where does it end, what I like about Notepad++ is that you can click and it'll show you where it starts and it ends. If you're writing your code and you swear you wrote it right, but then why is it not working? One way to troubleshoot is, well, if I click on H2, it highlighted. If I click on H1, didn't highlight. And that might give me some clue about wh what did I write wrong. Does anyone see what I did wrong? I left out the closing tag. And now it highlighted as soon as I added it. So most civilized code editors will do this. Uh, regular old Windows Notepad won't do this, and other software won't do this, but Eclipse does this, of course, and Visual, Base, uh, Visual Studio does this, and Sublime Text, and Brackets, and all of those do this. This is not anything really new. But if you're new to programming, this is a revelation. Because to look at just a big wall of code of black and white text is very hard to do any work. But with some color coding and syntax highlighting and all of that, code collapsing, it makes it easier. Um, I've added this H2. I want to save it and run it. I won't say all the time, run, launch, Firefox. I'll just say run, run it, which means load it in your web browser. So I get another big and bold piece of text, but slightly smaller font. Heading 2. It's the second most important heading. We can write in H3, H4, all the way to H6. So different hierarchies of importance. We've given it meaning. It's not just plain text. We've given it semantic meaning. This is a very important tenet of HTML5, of modern web apps and, uh, and, 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 and Android apps, that your content has meaning with the right, basically, the right tag for the right job.
Well, I don't want actually this to be as big and bold as Hello World. I want it to be just a normal piece, a normal paragraph, a normal text. So let's change this actually. Instead of the heading to tag, change that to the P tag, the paragraph tag. P. Change that. P slash P. That's for paragraph. This doesn't look like a paragraph because a traditional paragraph is like three or four sentences, right? But in HTML, the definition is that this is a paragraph. Save it and run it. Notice the difference. This is heading one. This is paragraph. Let's um, add a little bit more here. Uh, we can write text. We can add graphics. We'll add graphics in a moment. We can add links. We can add graphical flourishes and so forth. Let's try one of those. I want to make a dividing line um, to divide the top part and the bottom part, maybe. So let's say I've got a section that says, Hello World, HTML5, Android, and then a divider, and then some more text. So on the next line, press enter, line 12, we'll write the tag hr, which does not have a pair. This is one of those tags that doesn't have a pair. Now I'm not going to tell you what this does yet. hr sounds very cryptic. So add the hr tag, save it and run it. Tell me what it does. Let's see, I'm going to save it and run it. And it wrote a, it made a horizontal rule, a line. It made a line, a dividing line in the document. HR, horizontal rule. That did not have a pair, so it's just the one tag. Press enter and then we will add another, we'll add a heading two. And then we'll write our instructor. So I'm going to make a new section of my document where uh, we're going to add a picture of me and my name and so forth. If you want to see what it looks like so far, you have to save it and run it. Remember always to save. So line 14. I want to add a picture here. We have a tag for that. The image tag, I-M-G and that one does not have a pair. But it does have parameters. It does have details. Well, what picture? What size of the picture? What uh, alignment or position of the picture? Parameters. So inside of the image tag, we will write src equals quote end quote. So I notice a couple of people remember, this is inside of the tag, don't write it outside of it, within the angle brackets, source, src means source. And because HTML was written by a computer nerd based on languages written by other computer nerds, sometimes these codes, these tags, are not obvious, like image. Well, why didn't they just take the time to write it as image? Um, well, that's not how it happened. You know, I'm saying sometimes things, they just make, they were invented and that's the way it is. So here, source. That means where, where's the picture? Uh, load the picture here. If we had a picture, 
such as cat.jpg, well, we will write its, its file name there. But we don't have a picture. We don't have a picture saved in the same folder where I've got my project saved. My project is saved in my folder right here, June 19th. It's in my flash drive. I don't have a picture there called cat.jpg, so this source is wrong. It's not pointing to a picture that exists. But the cool thing is, we can also link to a picture that's on the internet. I'll give you a link to my picture in just a moment. The concept will be that we, will, we can write a web address here. If we put in an address to a picture on the internet, that will work. That won't work, don't write that. But we are going to use my picture on my website. Let's go to my website briefly. Let's, uh, on your web browser, let's, well, let's go to one of my websites. Let's go to vmcink.net. I'm in Firefox. I'm going to vmcink.net. There's a picture of me on the bottom right corner. Right there. If you right-click my picture in Firefox, I then have the option Copy Image Location. If you're using a different web browser, it'll probably say something like copy image address, something like that. So find my picture there on my website, right click it, copy image location, and then inside of the quotes of SRC, right click paste. So I was not going to have you write http colon slash slash vmcinc.net slash assets slash images slash new, etc., etc. You just copied the link. Now save it and run it. So that picture is not in your flash drive, it's on my website. But we are able to link to it with that code, with the code invented in 1989 by Sir Tim Berners-Lee, a student in Europe. Uh, the CERN uh, Research University. So, Tim Berners-Lee wanted to create a language that would be able to link documents together, to connect them, show images, etc. That's what we're writing. That's what we have here. Sorry, question? I'm sorry, if the owner of the other website changes that Exactly. That's a very good point. We are linked to someone else's picture. So if their site goes down, or they rename their graphic, or they put it in another folder, then we lose the, the link to it, and we get a broken link. So is it better to just save it in the folder? Yeah, that would be better. And um, that's what we're going to do when we get more complicated. But for the moment, at least we have a, a picture, and I'm not going to take it down in the foreseeable future. After, pre after that line, press Enter, and then in a plain paragraph, write my name. So after the image tag, enter, paragraph tags, my name. All right, so if we've gotten this far, great. It's time uh, for a break. We've written uh, a basic HTML file with some text and a line and a picture. We'll talk about links. We'll talk about colors and style and so forth. Let's take a 10-minute break. If you need any help, call me over. My code is right here. We'll be back at 8.17 uh, on the dot, please. Not, not coming in late because you're going to miss stuff. But here's the code so far.